Hi, family of God. This is Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful word of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. On this channel, all the content that we create on this channel are purely Christian content, and I entreat you to subscribe to this channel and like this very message you're about to listen to. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is what you hear that you listen to, that you engage, that brings results into your life. So I encourage you to stay tuned and watch this video to the end. And do subscribe to this channel and put in your comment section what you feel about this message. God bless you. There are many, many, many people, ladies and gentlemen, who are not willing to be students. They crave to come in the presence of great people. But let me give you an advice. Every time you meet great people, don't be obsessed with taking photos. Be obsessed with receiving graces. There are people who will barge into the life of strangers. They don't know them. You've never seen them. And the next thing, they're picking their phones, wanting to take selfie, so that they gather all of them and say, look, I've met everybody. Papa, Deboe, look at it. Bishop Oedebo, this is it. Papa Kumuyi, this is it. What from their life should you have to show a photo as proof that you met God through them? No. There should be a deposit. It should be an embarrassment to your destiny that you came so close to those graces and all you were thinking about was social media, not your destiny. Are we together? Oh, I met with this billionaire. I met with this one. Look, there's nobody I've not met with in this country. Can you help me with house rent? How does that sound? I was in a board meeting with the who's and who's in this nation. Sorry, my child has not gone to school. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to say it. Does that sound wise? You justify encounters by the deposits that are demonstrated in your life. Don't tell me who you met. Show me what you carried. Show me what you carried by meeting them. Don't tell me you, were, you met Jesus. Show me a deposit from that encounter that speaks today in your life. Don't tell me you met a powerful man of God. Don't tell me you were in T.L. Osborne's crusade, Reinhard Bonke's crusade. You were not the only one there. You must remain a student when you get into the presence of knowledge with proof minimize speaking listen listen even though what you may hear you may even know more than what you are hearing just listen there are people for instance who will come for counseling and for 10 minutes they are counseling you and yet they came for counseling Good afternoon, sir. I have a lot of problems in my life, but let me first share with you my encounters. There's something strange about me and God. I don't have the time. I don't want to sound like pride, but I hope you have the time to listen. So it started, I have this revelation. I see angels. Have you seen that kind of angel before? And, you are, and the person is watching you. So what brought you here now? Things are not working in my life. With the angels you saw? Are we together? Humility is an antidote for shame and embarrassment. If you can just humble yourself, you will, you, will, you will minimize the disgrace by many factors. Hallelujah. Sir, I want, I'm not sure you've ever heard about my situation. My situation is really serious. So what is the situation? As I'm speaking to you now, my landlord wants to drive me out of the house. I don't even know. I'm running mad. Nobody can help me. I don't even know if you can help. Well, let me just talk to you. How much is the rent? Yeah, well, he's increased it to 650,000. Can you imagine? And the person is watching you. What you call a mountain is what your eyes calls it, which is what your mind calls it. To an ant, a mold hill, is a skyscraper to humans it is something you just jump are we together remain a student 
remain a student. Remain a student. I heard Baba Adeboe praying over Bishop Oedepo. And he said, what you have seen, greater is coming. And I said, God, greater. There is no time he speaks over me that he does not say greater. It's as if the faith God gave those people back till they see Jesus. There is no, there is no plateauing at any level. Baba Deboe is going all around now doing a light of crusade in his 80s. You would think he should be resting and then he's speaking with joy and confidence. One day I jokingly asked someone close to him, I said, please, tell daddy to be resting. He said, don't waste your time. He said, we'll rest when we're in heaven. Are we together? The strength God gave these people Today, some of us have received impartation of that spirit of might. There are people who cannot stand for one hour. They must sit down. How old are you? 28. <laughs> it's not a weight problem. It's just that the capacity to do this work, you did not receive it. And you despise those who have been standing before you were born. They've stood on all kinds of platforms, under all kinds of conditions. You did not contact the spirit of might. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I remain a learner. I remain a student. Yes, sir. You are a great man of God. I agree, but remain a student. When you step into the presence of greatness, don't feel mediocre, but listen. Listen and learn. You enter the midst of prosperous people, listen and learn. You have the opportunity, ask questions. Sir, this is the level I am in ministry. God has helped us. If there's any advice you would give me, what would it be? And they look at your sense of honor. You come and park an expensive car outside and you are talking to someone who is blessed and the person wants to shake you like colleagues and you jokingly receive it and say, sir, please, if there is one advice you would give me at this point in my life, and they start pouring from their spirits and leave you wiser. They compress 10 years in a 10 minutes discussion. Profitable followership. Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Did you hear what I said? Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Let me give you one more. This is a very important one you need to know. Profitable followership must factor the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Profitable followers or followership must factor the limitations of the vessels that they follow or the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Never expect godlike perfection from the people who you follow. You will be disappointed. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> this is hard, ba. Listen, no. Never expect godlike perfection from the people you follow. You will be disappointed a thousand times. Not because they are bad. There is this treasure, the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, I believe that should be it. Never replace the quest for perfection with sincerity of heart. One day the person you admire as a man of God is going to get angry. And that day you will be disappointed seeing your admired man of God angry. One day you may meet him quarreling with his wife or his child. And you say, how can a man be so anointed? How can Elijah be so angry? And yet God is still using him. And you would think God would transfer the anointing to you because you saw it. It will never come to you. It will still remain on him. You see how God works? By the time you report Elijah to God, God will say, I'm aware. Keep following. <laughs> now you will respect Elisha. What made the other prophets angry could have made Elisha too angry. But he kept following. Elijah, historically speaking, was a temperous man. For disturbing him, he called down fire. What kind of a man is that? 
Imagine that you are the one following him. What will happen the day is now angry with you? What then happens if you are his wife? Others can run away, but you are there. And yet God will choose to leave that grace with Elisha. Elijah. And the, the prophet said, I hope you know your master is going. They never called him their master. You know your master is going. The standard character of offense. Go and do your thing. Let him even go and let us rest. Hopefully one of us will take over now. And will be a correction to his madness. And Elisha kept following. Where is Elisha? Don't, don't make me angry. Sorry, sir. And people say, you are such an idiot. You don't have, you removed your brain following Elijah. And one day, one day, temperous Elijah looks at Elisha and says, ask. He didn't say, my wonderful son, you have been with me all these years. You are a good person. What should I give you? Will you answer a man who tells you that you have been following him? Are you following for nothing? He says, I'm about to go. Ask now. What a model. And he said, I have no time. I understand your limitations. I will look beyond it. There is something within you that my destiny needs. And I will endure whatever to receive it. Is someone learning now? Now, the challenge with the body of Christ and the reason why we keep getting disappointed is because we expect God-like perfection in men. I am not, and every man who has limitations and is not working on it must be a foolish man. It is not the limitations of men that destroy them. It is limitations unaddressed. Unaddressed. That's why I said every man should be working on something. You are struggling with anger. Don't just say, I'm like that. What are you doing about it? Hallelujah. But the body of Christ will continue getting disappointed because of our appetite for God-like perfection in men. Nobody can stand that standard of God's perfection. It is a treasure in earthen vessels. Are we together now? Yes. I knew this from the start of the journey. Every time I receive from the fathers, my eyes has no business looking at their limitations. It doesn't mean they don't have it. They are humans. And sometimes it becomes clear and visible in many regards. Whatever you can adjust, adjust for your own benefit, but follow with honor. This is the character of wise followership. Are we together? All the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. Why the guy drank, he will answer it with God there. But he got naked and one of the sons called the brother and said, can you imagine our foolish father when the father got up, nobody told him they saw him. He knew. He said, all of you come. One of you has done this. And he cursed him. A servant of servants shall you be. And you would think God will not honor it. Some of you have seen the limitations of those who have gone ahead of you. Maybe you pray more than them. Maybe you fast more than them. Maybe they have a weakness of money. Maybe they have a weakness of character flaws and you can stand to be saying, yes, sir, and go in the secret and say, this man is already dead. He will not finish. And later you come and say, sir, I love you. Lay hands on my head. Even if the person climbs on your head, nothing will rest. I assure you. Are we together? Yes. When you honor those ahead of you, it is because you are not unaware of their limitations. I have met men of God who I believe love Jesus, but my God, they are temperous. If they are angry and you stand close to them, they probably can slap you, but you endure. There are people who love Jesus, but even with their eyes closed, if you wave money, they will open it. <laughs> and yet God will not remove the anointing and give you. This God, ba, just leave him all. He knows what he's doing with men. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you how to receive from the body of Christ. You can go for a conference and sit down. And a man of God can be sarcastic. You can ignore that part and focus on what you have to receive and leave. You can go somewhere and the praise and worship is not as powerful as what you experience in Koinonia. Don't sit down and start saying, these guys, now are for you, oh. I mean, look at blind people plus the man of God's help. 
That is not your assignment. Your assignment is to endure whatever and receive. It is the price for followership. Hallelujah. I've gone to places to preach where I knew after that preaching, my voice will also leave. Because they may not have the best of excellence, but I already programmed myself. I go there with a heart of honor and I appreciate them. You would think that I was kept in a five-star hotel. I'm the one who knows what I went through there, but I give God glory. In the midst of it, one word comes to you. You have honored us. May God lift you and lift Koinonia. I shout amen. I return back with that grace and you see the results speak. My question is, who have you ignored today and closed the door of grace? It has become fashionable to tear down people, tear down men of God, tear down successful people. People enjoy doing it. It's as if their credibility is established around it. It is a recipe for disaster, I assure you. Hallelujah. I have met very blessed and wealthy people, very wealthy people. And even as a man of God, after I greet them, I don't sit down and say, kneel down, let me pray for you. I'm spiritual. But these guys have built things that I have not built yet. And while they come respecting me, I am discerning, Lord, what grace did you place on them? If this grace is added to what I have now, it will be an advantage for Koinonia. And sometimes they don't have to pray for me. I receive by faith. And the difference becomes clear that something has been added to what is upon me. Can I tell you, after this meeting, go back home and together with God, repent from being a contributor to the pain of the people who invest in leading you. If you have caused pain to anybody whose lives you have modeled or you are modeling, go and ask God for forgiveness. Otherwise, a harvest of it is being programmed to your own future. It doesn't matter whether you are treated well or not. It doesn't matter whether people insult you or not. Yours is God will vindicate you. You have your own destiny. If you call me stupid and I call you stupid, who is wiser? No. You see that now? So many of us need to be careful. You have insulted everybody whose life you admire and yet you pray in secret and say, Father, let this grace come upon them. Do you know, let me tell you sincerely as we prepare to round up, there are people who have come to me for prayer. I want to lay my hands on them and I sense like the doors of the anointing has been closed. I know that even though these people are kneeling down, they are saying, yes, sir, it is not genuine from the heart. I may just say, God bless you, but sincerely, I know that I'm wasting my time. It doesn't work that way. Is God speaking to someone? It is the reason why when men of God pass on to glory, you will just find maybe one or two persons who have carried their graces. And you are wondering what happened to everybody around them. May I never come close to a great man and yet not receive anything because of dishonor and childishness and carelessness. Take note of this third point. Profitable followership must factor in the limitations in men that God uses. God does not use men because they are flawless. He does not use men because they are perfect. Now, don't get me wrong. Every model must rise to become a model enough worthy of emulation. This is what we advocate. But this, this campaign for God-like perfection will only end people in trouble. There are great vessels carrying grace and they are limited. And the limitation does not have to be something wrong. There are some, their limitation is that they are not enlightened. There are some, their limitation is that they are not very worded to be able to edit a lot of things. Hallelujah. There are people when they pray for you, you would think it's an idol they are praying to because they didn't go to school and they did not have the privilege of secular enlightenment. They only work based on what they know. But you look at that woman, you know that that mama is a powerful woman of God. It's just that she did not have the privilege. It's how she was mentored. One day I was praying for someone and he carried a bag. 
in that bag was oil in that bag was water in that bag was new handkerchief they have not opened in that bag all kinds of things i said how do i tell this person now just keep this let me lay hands on your head i had to respond to the way he believes god works one day they will learn and they will know better are we together now i'm saying this as a man of god so that in dealing with people somebody will come with oil he will even come with a plate of food and say pray on it i want to eat the food as communion don't worry don't be too hard on people and say you are this base level of thinking sometimes you just honor them at the level of their faith and let them receive and trust god that they grow hallelujah a great woman of god i will not mention the name one came once came to this nation and after she was done praying the people were disappointed because nigerians don't pray like that when she was done praying she said now all of you believe you have received and ah, the people were, were watching this woman you don't know the problems that we have then someone came and collect the mic and said now we're about to pray people were happy <laughs> say this after me and the people said it and they were saying now that's right this is nigeria there are many, many people who come and when I pray for them, I say in the name of Jesus is done. You can see the sheer disappointment. You know where I travel from is done just like that. And so when I discern that, I can say, okay, let me touch your head, touch your hand. And you see them agreeing. I carried something. Whatever your faith can believe, I will release it to you at that level. I'm praying for you from today you will step into unusual levels of grace. Now hear me. Every grace God has deposited in this ministry that you have not received in the name of Jesus, as a result of this teaching tonight, I cry unto my God one more time. May that grace rest on you. Listen, let me submit to you under God. If you have been part of this vision for up to one year, there are some things that should start speaking in your life. And if it is not speaking, go and examine these things. It is either you are not a student genuinely learning or you are not genuinely connected. You are just a fan, a spectator who comes to watch these things. One year, 365 days is enough for some things to start speaking. I'm praying for you. Wherever dishonor closed doors towards you or lack of discernment, I cry unto my God this night by the power that raised Christ from the dead. May God revisit you with these anointings. May my God revisit you with these anointings. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he's not going to go and so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, um, probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. 
So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around. 